Hey, good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, Hurricane Track here. Thursday now, the 21st of August, 2025. Coming to you still from Rodanthe, North Carolina, of course. Where else would I be? Covering the effects from Hurricane Aaron. And later today, this next high tide will probably be the one that causes the most impacts. We'll address all of that as we move forward. So we're going to look at Aaron, and then we're going to look at after Aaron and what comes next because it looks like things are going to stay busy, maybe a little bit of a break. And then once we get to September, I think things are going to really get active. And I'll show you why I think some of these things. I don't just make it up as I go. I will present the evidence here, and we will do with it what we can, right? That's the best we can do. So let's start off going back in time a little bit, thanks to the wonders of the Internet. This post here from Eric Webb way back on August the 7th, Hey, that was just a couple weeks ago, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Eric said, rarely do things line up as favorably for tropical development sub-seasonally as they will next week in the East Atlantic. And he mentions all of these different parameters right in here, from the MJO to the convectively coupled Kelvin wave, the Rossby wave. All of that's just fancy talk for, oh, it looks pretty favorable out there. And then this right here I thought was very important, and he was right. This will be a good litmus test of how favorable the Atlantic is this year. And I think if I do the big reveal right here, we can all agree, oh, it was pretty favorable. We got Aaron out of it, which was at one time a Category 5, racking up the ace points, the accumulated cyclone energy. That's kind of like what a basketball player would score in a game, as an example. You know, like the high scorer so far, it's Aaron. All right. And then we've got this new area. This will be once the 2 p.m. advisory information and tropical weather outlook comes out. It'll be on there as 90L, but it is invest area 90L. Don't worry about that. It kind of looks like a little yellow fish out there, and it'll stay out over the ocean. This is 99L, and we've all been curious as to why it wasn't upgraded to a tropical depression at least. Hey, that is not my call. I don't work at the Hurricane Center. Totally up to them. And maybe in postseason analysis, they'll say, yeah, actually it was for a little bit. But nevertheless, it's going to remain out over the open waters, it does look like. This feature right here, though, is what I am most concerned with, not for the U.S. East Coast or anything like that, but yes, for our friends over here in Bermuda. Howard, I'm sorry, time looks like it's going to run out on you. Something does appear to be coming your way. We'll, we'll get to all that. So let's look at it, speaking of getting to all that, from the satellite perspective. Here is gigantic Hurricane Aaron with all of the impacts, mainly from the churned-up ocean, the energy there. We've talked about that a lot. You know how it is by now, affecting a great deal of the Atlantic seaboard here, and even down to the north-facing beaches of the islands of the Caribbean. Then we have 90L sitting in here. This is 99L. More energy coming off Africa. Yeah, I would say that Eric Webb's tweet there back on August the 7th held a lot of water. It certainly did. It came to pass. The Atlantic responded. And keep in mind that all of this activity that's on the board right now started and did its thing, so to speak, got cranked up before that magical August 20th beginning of the normal ramping up of the hurricane season. So in many regards, especially with the ACE score, the amount of name storms, the hurricane that we've had, it was a major hurricane, a Cat 5. We are ahead of the overall historical record. Will we stay that way as we go through the next several weeks and eventually through November? Well, that remains to be seen. But this right here, what you're looking at, does suggest that the Atlantic background state will be quite favorable as we go into September and beyond. And I'm going to show you some very interesting things I Talked about it a couple of days ago, and these things continue to present themselves as being even more interesting as we move along. We will get to all of that here moving forward. So, uh, so for real quick, though, a little update on our workout here. Um, I'll show you the Buxton camera right here. This is the one down uh, at the motels there. Really appreciate Billy allowing us to put the camera on one of his buildings to monitor what is happening we're hoping that the ocean does not claim these buildings, but if it were to do so, the Atlantic there at high tide today, this evening, we will at least understand the process, especially 
when we look at it in time lapse. And look, I know it sounds obvious. You know, big waves came in and knocked it over. What is there to know? Well, if we can look at it in time lapse, and we will, we're saving all of this video on our back end. We'll compress it, make a time lapse out of it, share it with our friends at UNC Wilmington and the Coastal Engineering Department and anybody else that's interested. I mean, all of this stuff gets paid for by our crowdfunding group on Patreon, and then a great majority of everything we do after that, we make it available for anybody who needs to utilize it to understand the weather better. You know, we don't sell the data, we don't sell the video, except in media cases, because that's different. But for helping the science, no, 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 no. It's always available free of charge. And should something catastrophic happen, we really can learn a lot about the process in which that took place. So it's interesting to look at now, but it does have value even when everything is all said and done. So let's zoom in here. By the way, this is the interactive map off the Hurricane Track Insider site. And if you have recently signed up through Patreon, first, thank you. We appreciate that support. Good to have you. Head over to the interactive map. It's right off the main menu of the Hurricane Track Insider page. And how, this, that's how you can get to this map. Now, look, we don't have a camera way out here, but they're all right close together. So our friend Mike, kind of being funny, said, I'm going to stick that one out in the ocean because, hey, the Rodanthe Pier, it says reverse Rodanthe Pier because it's looking back toward the land. The world-famous Rodanthe Pier, as it's called. So far, so good. Those missing boards in the middle there, our middle sections, these were taken out to hopefully prevent some of the waves as they come through from doing damage. It kind of relieves the pressure. At least that's the thought process there. But everything doing great. Our camera system's absolutely killing it. This is the uh, twin houses we've been watching for the better part of two days now. Still doing all right. And no, they were not built in the water. I talked about that on Fox Weather last night with Ari. Uh, the ocean just moves closer. You know, it's a barrier island. And again, arguing whether or not people should live here, that's a whole other story. And that is not my department. It is a beautiful piece of land. Lots of hardworking people out here for the tourism industry, the national park system, and, of course, fishing, charter boats, you name it, a beautiful area of the country battling the elements ever since anybody discovered it hundreds, if not thousands of years ago, even with Native Americans out here, right? All right, so here's what I wanted to show you. This is really interesting and important stuff. That is the anomaly from the 19th of August, so two days ago, and you can clearly see where our hurricane has chewed away the positive anomalies. It came along, churned everything up. Powerful, large hurricane. It was getting larger down there, but very powerful. And it whacked away some of those anomalies. It took the upper ocean heat content out and uh, turned it into clouds and showers and thunderstorms and dissipated that heat. That's the 19th. This is yesterday. Look how big it's gotten and how pronounced the anomaly has become. So there's the 19th, there's the 20th, and you bet. I'll show you the next one and the next one and the next one because, you know, when we get there, because it is going to be something else when this is all said and done. If we widen the view, that's the area right there, and look at all of the warm water around all of this, the very warm, anomalously warm water, you know, one, two Celsius above normal, and Aaron came along and chewed a big chunk of that out, getting even larger, and then this blue will spread on up. You'll have this big swath right up through here that'll carve away a lot of these anomalies. And this is important because this warm pool sitting up here is in the subtropics. All of this warmth down here is in the deep tropics. And as Aaron actually goes through, it'll chew away a lot of this subtropical high latitude warmth relative to what we're seeing down in the deeper tropics. And that will probably give us a very favorable setup as we head into September. So that's something we're going to have to watch closely. Absolutely. So speaking of Aaron and what it's going to do and the other activity that we need to watch, there is our big hurricane down at the 5,000 foot level sitting around uh, 850 millibars. And uh, that's 90 L now. And this is 99 L. And that's some more energy trying to come off Africa just to give you a sense of what's where. So let's put this into motion. Aaron goes on, continuing to chew up the Atlantic. And then look what happens. Just uh, 36 hours out, 
our newly designated 90L starts to come together down here. And there's Bermuda right there. I'm going to mark it in blue. And let's keep moving this forward. Watch what happens. That starts to develop 72 hours out, and then it gets really close to Bermuda there. And that could be a big problem. Notice that 99L, though, at uh, 108 hours out is just a sharp wave sitting down here. And uh, we'll watch. It's been tenacious so far. So uh, the next system blossoms, heads out to the Atlantic. So between Aaron and what would eventually be Fernand, these are going to really take out a lot of that upper ocean heat content through this part of the ocean. And I cannot emphasize enough. I think that's going to help set the stage for a very busy September and October. Let's zoom in. Look at that big wind field. This is the 10 meter wind uh, analysis from the GFS. There goes Aaron. And then here comes our next one. This will be Fernan. Yep, that's how you say it. Fernan or something like that. The D is silent. So it's Fernan, apparently. Anyway, it's 972 on the GFS to 966 or 65, something like that. I'm just a foot away from the screen. It's hard for me to read it. But the bottom line, small hurricane possible. Hey, it's 108 hours out. We'll see. Howard and our good friend over there that owns the Swizzle, Jay and his family, you guys better watch this. You know how these one-two punches go. You've seen them in the past. And here we go again. What about even further down the road? Ben Knoll putting out his sage advice today. Sinking air will overtake the Atlantic during late August, and that'll be probably right after we get rid of Fernan, which is coming, apparently. Uh, pressing pause on hurricane risks. By early to mid-September, the return of rising air, the MJO, and maybe some Kelvin waves coming through, will bring rising storm chances, though there may initially be a convective competition with the eastern Pacific. So this is where we are roughly right now. And it's hard to see, but the, uh, the Atlantic Basin is all through here. And, you know, North America is up here, Africa over here. And we're entering a less favorable environment overall. And once Fernand comes and goes, we get to definitely a less favorable environment. This red area, sinking air. There's the MDR that Ben has outlined in the rectangle. And then by the time we do get to the first part of September, the rising motion starts to come back, probably get a couple of name storms in the east pack over here. And then it is probably, and I gotta say probably because I don't know, but this makes sense, especially, and, and what I'm saying is things getting very active. It's already been very active. What, uh, Eric said on August 7th came to pass. It was a true test and the Atlantic, I think, passed that test. So we gotta stay on top of this. We've got really, really lucky with Aaron, that it was not a landfall. Again, I know message from Mark's Department of the Obvious here, but that was and still is a formidable, huge hurricane, and it would have caused a massive surge uh, along the coast had it come into the Carolinas or wherever. So we got to watch all this. we got to stay on top of it, all right? Finally, before I let you go, very proud of all the technology that we have out there, and one of the neat things is the use of 360 video, I want to show you this. I'm going to talk about it later this afternoon with Ian Oliver on Fox Weather as well. Really cool stuff. I did this down in Buxton. Let me drop out because before I press play, I want to show you how I did this. It is pretty darn cool. So there's the Atlantic. And uh, what is that? The Atlantic Motel? Is that what it's called? I should have known that. But this is that place where uh, Billy, the owner, allowed us to put the camera, which was like right up there. Uh, and this is underneath, and these are the pilings. So this is a still image from the video. You can see a big wave is heading in. There's your sandbags. And here's the sand fence. And there's the little clamp thing that I put on the sand fence. So it's literally clamped to the sand fence. And the sand fence itself has been undermined, so it's like waving back and forth. And Brad was like, oh, man, that's going to like be kind of awful, right? It's going to be waving around and bouncy. The technology in these cameras these days that stabilizes the video when I put this into motion, you're not going to believe it. So let's do that, all right? So here it is. First wave comes in, hits everything, and we can swivel around. Look at that. That sand fence is jiggling, but the camera, the view, believe me, that thing is like wavering back and forth, and you can barely detect it. You can barely see it. 
So let's get another wave coming. There it is. It goes under. This is why we build the houses on stilts out here, right? While they're on pilings. And yeah, it's moving a little bit back and forth, but the stability of these modern 360 cams, wow, absolutely incredible. And we look at it full screen. Uh, yeah. And this is what we're going to do on Fox. They actually go and they interact with it, the producer, and we show this on TV. We're going to really use this more and more to help tell the story of what happens with extreme weather and even just beautiful weather. You get a big old snowstorm, lake effect snow. Oh, I'd love to deploy one of these in a big snow band off of Erie or Ontario. That would be something else. But it's hurricane season, and we're going to continue to use the technology that we've got uh, during the season. And there comes me to get that camera off the sand fence there. Yeah, I'll talk about it a little bit more later on Fox Weather. I think around 3.30 today, something like that, with Ian Oliver. All right, kind of a long video today, but we had a lot to talk about. Huge thank you to everybody that has been subscribing and joining in on the YouTube channel. We appreciate that. So many people watch YouTube these days. Uh, it's a privilege. It really is. It's great to be able to hopefully educate you and inform you and bring some science to it and the excitement of our project while respecting that people are impacted. They really are. The economy, their livelihoods, and all of that. And we just try to do the best we can with it. So thank you very much for being such a big part of it, uh, especially if you are brand new. You just stumbled across the channel, which we've been here since 2006. So where you been? All right. Good to have you regardless, right? Have a good rest of your Thursday. I'll probably be out here for a day or two longer. We'll see. Uh, and I'll keep doing these videos as long as I'm here. And then when I get home, we'll do them from home. Anyway, have a good rest of your afternoon. I am Mark Suttoth. We'll talk again soon.